Welcome. Uh, good to see you again. It is the 31st of March 2022 and I am at last, at last, um, going out on what I hope will be um, my first astro shoot, planned astro shoot in a long time. And today is one of those days where a whole lot of things come together. Uh, so things like, for example, there is no moon uh, in the sky tonight. We've also uh, got clear weather forecast. So I use the Clear Outside app to uh, check on how the weather is shaping up, particularly in terms of both high, middle and low level cloud. And when I last looked at that yesterday evening, it was predicting um, a clear sky. Um, I've been preparing and uh, preparation has been a bit nuts here as well. This is my little charging station. I began charging things yesterday morning. Still on the go down here, there is um, a, I've got a head torch. I've got another three head torches gimbal. Nikon camera, the Nikon camera uh, has uh, three batteries. Next to it, we have the Sony that also has uh, three batteries. That's the same, my Move, Shoot, Move, Start Tracker. A whole load of spare batteries, uh, as well as um, two devices that will help me align uh, the tracker to the night sky. So there, um, I have some lens warmers and those will need to be powered. And then behind those, I have a couple of lights. My hand torch, which is the final item that I need to make sure uh, is fully charged up. Uh, and that is a, an LED uh, torch that I use for pinpointing things I want to highlight with light painting. Well, welcome back to Dartmoor. And what has to be one of my absolute favorite places to be. It's a long time since I've been here. I'm at Kestor at the moment, uh, which you can see behind me. And uh, there's been some drama in the skies, but as per the forecast, uh, it is going to be, it is starting to clear actually, which is great news. I've come out to shoot the night sky and I've chosen this particular place uh, because I'm headed for Thornworthy Tour where I've been before and a few years ago I came here and I took some shots, I think, to try out my Sony RX10 Mark IV on some astro work and it was not a bad effort all things considered I think considering it's really not a low light intended as a low light camera but it was all I had at the time uh, but now I have acquired some time ago um, a Nikon D750 so it's a nice full frame camera it's good for low light and I've got a great low light lens uh, as well. It's a uh, 20 millimeter f1.8 nickel, uh, so it's fixed focal length and I'll be shooting with that tonight 
Uh, I've also brought my Sony along, but also I have my Move Shoot Move Star Tracker. I'm not quite sure what use I'm going to make of it yet, but we shall see. Now, Milky Way season has begun. And this time, about three years ago, I think it was, I was here. It might have been four years ago. Early April, now it's the 31st of March, but early April, uh, I had a quite a nice shot of the Milky Way rising uh, above the reservoir, uh, and uh, Fernworthy Reservoir, that is. And uh, I'm hoping to not just replicate that shot, but improve on it. So I'll be doing some stacked images to just get a really nice noise-free or low noise sky, night sky. And uh, I've got some more light painting techniques I can use, some remote shutter releases and stuff that I didn't have at the time. If I can find time, I might do a time lapse uh, but I don't want to overload the agenda, so uh, we'll see what takes me at the time. Uh, but at the very least, I want to get some nice stacked shots of the night sky with some low noise and some um, light painting of the tour. So here we are, we are at Thornworthy Tour. And every time I come here, it looks a little bit different. So the, today the, the grasses are that bit taller. Uh, the path around this side of it is not obvious at all, uh, whereas it has been before. So let's go and take a look, see what is on the other side. So I'm going to get on, I'll get set up, make sure that everything is settled so that I can just concentrate on some photography. While I set up, I hope you might enjoy a little time lapse that I took earlier at Kestor. There's some clouds rolling in. I've got to say, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do because I think it's one of the more beautiful ones that I've been able to take. Let me know what you think. Okay, we're all uh, we are all set up for the evening, and uh, food is on the go. Uncle Ben's rice of some description, Chinese style, I think, uh, with some. Oh, see if we can get that with some added tuna. So I'm quite looking forward to that because I'm actually pretty hungry. Well, it's getting dark now, and uh, although we are a long way off, stars appearing uh, in any meaningful in any meaningful way. Uh, but I have a shot I think that uh, may well work. I've got my Nikon D750 here and um, uh, no filters or anything like that on. This hasn't been set up specifically for astrophotography or anything like that. So it's a red filter. Uh, I've got no filters for reducing um, for reducing uh, light pollution or anything like that. It's just a straightforward standard Nikon D750. All right, a um, couple of quick updates. Uh, sadly, um, the co it is pretty cold actually. It's quarter to nine. Um, it's not that late, uh, but it is 
it's pretty dark now and it's really cold. It's really, really cold out there. So I'm glad I got some really warm gear with me and, and bought some new warm gloves actually. So I'm gonna try and get some kip now for um, probably four or five hours and then see what the night sky is doing. Welcome back. It's 20 past two. So I've been out here for about an hour or so taking care of foreground shots and uh, yeah so it's just been going really well lots of light painting uh, set the camera up on f5 uh, it's various different um, exposure settings and different lighting techniques I've used uh, my trusty uh, LED torch here with an orange gel on it. Um, I've also been using uh, the lamp that is lighting me now, which uh, is an orange, um, well, not a gel, but you can change the colour temperature on the lamp. Um, the other point of note uh, is that the ISO I set to 500 for this. I also spent a bit of time making sure that my focus was absolutely right. The foreground is shot. Uh, I've probably done that because it's got a wide foreground to include lots of it. All these lovely grasses and things and to get the textures in these fantastic rocks. Um, I've taken about 50 shots. Um, I'll probably use a fraction of those. And, um, because some of them really the light was just too dim and I'll just discard those uh, but nevertheless I think I've got quite a few there that are really very very usable and uh, we'll blend those together in Photoshop. Uh, now using those settings has meant that the stars just don't show up which is fantastic that's absolutely what I want we don't want the stars to show in those shots because it's going to make it much easier when it comes to blending them together in Photoshop and making sure that just the stars show when I want them to show. Okay, so now I'm going to change the camera settings up and uh, we're going to get on with photographing the night sky. So, so completely different settings for that. Use a higher ISO. I'll experiment with that a bit. Probably going to use um, between 4000 and 6400. Uh, it's a 20mm lens, so I can, and it's a full frame camera, so I can probably be going up to about 25 seconds before I get beanie shaped stars, that sort of level. Uh, so, um, yeah, so ISO between 4000 4, and 6400, up to 25 seconds on the exposure and the aperture I'm going to put at f2.8. It's an f1.8 lens but I'm going to f2.8 uh, so that um, uh, we, we don't really push the lens too hard. Okay phase two has been completed and that is the photographing of the night sky. I've got to say in a moment what I have done I have uh, sat on the 6400 ISO and 20 seconds and um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the shutter speed, uh, and then the uh, f-stop is 2.8. Uh, I've done a couple of black shots with the lens cap on, and then I've taken about eight or ten um, shots of the, of the night sky. At 25 seconds. I was just getting some beanies, uh, which I'd rather not have. And we're going to stack various images that I took. Hopefully that way we should reduce uh, any noise in the photograph and be able to put together a beautiful night sky picture with some foreground. Right, gosh, I'm back in my tent and uh, it's four o'clock. Time for a couple of hours kip. 
it's absolutely freezing. I think this is as cold a camp as I have been on. I don't believe the temperature on my watch. It still says minus one. It's a very heavy frost on the tent. And in fact, everything has got frost on it. And uh, the condensation on the inside of the tent is frozen as well. So uh, it's pretty chilly. So I'm gonna get wrapped up nice and warm and see you guys in the morning. Oh, good morning. That was a long cold night and you know it's been properly cold when your tent doesn't drip condensation, it flakes ice instead. So, right, time for some breakfast. Got some big soup, some nice big soup, something hot, warm to uh, warm me up, get me going and we'll see whether or not I've got any decent pictures last night. Well, I've got to say, uh, just having taken a quick peek there, that the, the raw images on camera um, do appear to come out quite nicely. Uh, they look pin sharp, as far as I can tell. Well, all in all, I would have to say it's actually been a pretty successful trip from what I can tell. Uh, quick look at the back of the D700 shows some nice crisp photographs and really good skies. So uh, the planning, I think, has paid off. You can never really tell till you get it back on the big screen, but so far it's looking good. And I look forward to showing you uh, the results of some of those. I need to give a bit of a shout out really for some of the techniques that I've been using to Richard Tatty. I think that's T-A-T-T-I. Richard has, I mean, I've watched a lot of videos about how to, how to do astro stuff over the years. Of all the ones that I've watched, I've got to say that I think Richard's is by far and away the clearest. So do head over to his channel at some point. It's called Nightscape Images and you're gonna find some, just a wealth of really good, well-explained stuff there. So thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoy some of the pictures at the end of this video. Uh, do comment, share, like, subscribe, all those kind of fantastic things that do encourage me to continue to make videos. And I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.